Cool. Let's do it. All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Michael Jensen, a.k.a. Brave Jayhawk, to talk about, uh, well, somewhat last week's uh, Survivor Pool results and this week's Survivor Pool picks and analysis and some look into the season. And as usual, we um, uh, we don't talk about this beforehand, so we can get a quick uh, everybody's uh, honest takes without being influenced, which is good. Um, so first of all, what everybody has up here, you have Survivor Grid, which we'll talk about in a minute. We have the uh, True DFS uh, 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 EV calculator over here. So for me, um, last week, uh, I, I went with what we, what, what I talked about, what we talked about, and, and mostly, if not all, went with uh, San Francisco and Vegas. And I did sprinkle some other, some other hoodoo plays in these, in these random lottery double pick pool weeks, uh, pool things. But like, I had a couple of Detroits, I had a couple of Washingtons, I had all kinds of nonsense because those pools just need that stuff. But uh, in Circa, I had um, uh, uh, I mean, I have a partner, but on my entries, I had one San Fran and one Vegas. So the Vegas one went down, obviously in fine style, but that's part of survivor pool business. I have no right to complain after New Orleans. Week one. It's similar to the week before, and that's just the way it's going to be, you know. Um, so from a results perspective, um, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, before we get into this week, how'd you, how'd you do uh, overall last week? A lot of yelling and screaming in the basement <laughs> on Sunday. Um, the kids already know the bad words. Uh, they got uh, – they heard them a lot on Sunday. Uh, we went the same, same exact direction. I, we oh. had a little bit more San Francisco than Las Vegas. We went all three entries on San Francisco in Circa. Nice. Um, so we – we, so we have three of our remaining six awesome. left in Circa. That's great. That's excellent. And then uh, in our other, you know, bigger buy-in pool, we had six entries. We went for San Francisco and two Las Vegas. And I, I, I like the direction you went with your random teams for um, pools that will have double picks later. I went really conservative. I, I sprinkled in a little bit of Denver because um, I, I, I knew I'd – I didn't want to be left with some of them later. So I sprinkled a little bit in. I didn't like them as a standalone pick, but as a little sprinkle for uh, to diversify the pro portfolio, I, I liked Denver last week. The, uh, the, the other thing is that uh, just a little update on one particular pool in, in one of the, the two plus two, I call it the two plus two pools in the, uh, in the nitrogen pool, that, that big one has got, they lost two players. So that's down to 10. We got two, we had two Cincinnati people last week go out. So that was down to ten, and uh, I'm already looking ahead, and and, and only uh, only a hand, uh, a, a bunch of them, uh, the remainder burned burned the Rams. So that's going to be good news for me down the road, mm -hmm. and a couple more burned Denver, and that's going to be down good for me down the road. So uh, and that and that and that entry, I just had, I used uh, I used San Fran, so so I had New Orleans and San Fran in that one. So uh, that's pretty that's uh, pretty strong for a single single pick. Uh, single pick pool to get away with that. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. So this week, again, just again, for those of you who are watching for the first time, um, let me just make sure this is going on. Uh, <clears throat> hold on a second. I am recording, right? I believe so. Uh, let me just double check that. Um, yes. Um, so again, what we're looking for in, in good survivor pool picks is a combination of good EV, which is a combination of a team's winning chances as determined by mostly by uh, Las Vegas lines. Um, and also as a function of popularity, because you know you want it, if you have two teams that are relatively equal, as far as win percentage, you want to take the team that's less owned so you get more leverage on that team. And, and these those calculations are usually created for you right here in either you know the true dfs uh, ev calculator or the uh the survivor pool for free uh calculator as well one thing i will say is that if you ever want to change for whatever reason well for good reason sometimes the pick percentages but also the win percentages, you could do that here and get this ev thing um now in addition to that obviously you want to pick teams that eat you know yes it'd be great if they had a good ev but also you want to pick teams that have low future value, meaning that you'd rather play, you know, if, if you're thinking of using a team later, you know, you don't want to use them now. And if you can't see any reason to use a team later, then you want to lose them now. And we talk about the term mapping sometimes to talk about, you know, describe how you map out the entire season, which we've gone over at length in the last couple of weeks. And I actually do encourage you, if you haven't watched the first two weeks, I know it might be boring, like knowing the, the results and everything like that. But it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to kind of go through them. This is your, this is your first time 
with with the site because with our with our podcast because you know Mike goes over I mean some well me too but I'll shout out to Mike goes over some really like advanced concepts about how to how to look at this stuff and we'll go through them here as well but that's kind of where we're at so we're, let, we're let me jump let me at, jump in really quick as yeah. going back to another reason to plug in your own percentages last week I think I mentioned on the podcast that. I like San Francisco, even if they were 20% picked, we were going to go really hard on them. I think they ended up being 19% picked yeah. in Circa. Yeah. Um, the reason it's important to use that calculator later and, and adjust the percentages, if you're looking at you know Survivor Grid on later weeks for San Francisco as a play, they're going to be – the, the, it's just going to be – it's going to be different for your pool when – uh, 80% of the people have them available as compared to maybe uh, 95% of some of the other ones. That's where it comes into play. And in, and in a weird way, you know, the, 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 the more vanilla the pool and, and the, the, the earlier in the season it is, I mean, the more amount of people that are left, the more accurate the ownership projections are going to be and, the, and the, uh, the more relevant they are, I guess. But yet they, have, they carry much more importance and leverage a little later in the season. So, um, as, as Mike was saying, all pools are different, and we're going we're gonna to analyze these for, uh, almost 90% of the time from a straight single picks pool with no kind of like a weird baloney like we have in the circuit where you have to pick one of, you know, a handful of teams in Thanksgiving. And Chris, and we, we will go over that, you know, when it comes to it. But, and and we'll, we'll identify those kind of double pick pool type, type, type plays. But in general, we're talking about single pick stuff. So what I did was I ranked these by EV, and we're going to do this the same <clears> we always do. We're going to we're going to go through the the EV plays, and then you know the kind of the high EV plays, and then after we get through them, you know we'll we'll talk about maybe if there's some kind of like who do underneath, you know, like like they call the uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna coin this one day. I'm coin right now. The Jay brave Hawks, Jay Hawks brave play. You know that's that maybe we could we could call that from there. Um, uh, so we're going from the top. So you have Buffalo at, you know, they're, they're rated to be the top EV team, but before I, I, we even get into it, you know, I'll, I will, again, the chess video, you know, if you guys don't know by now, if you pause the video and you can think, and you know, you, you can ask yourself why maybe Buffalo wouldn't be the best play. You could pause the video. Okay. And then you can come back. I mean, I guess I'll take this one. Cause I think this is the easiest one. Um, even though they're the highest EV, they can be used so many times in the future to such great degree that I think to play them now it actually kind of borders on bad, you know? Uh, um, so uh, and I don't like to say bad, good or whatever it is, but I did kind of like last week, I thought that, by the way, I did take your advice by a little bit. I did, I did play a green Bay, which I originally had dismissed, you know, mm. but I did play one green Bay. But anyway, so I think the Buffalo is just kind of like a really, really bad survivor pool play. It's, it's, you know, semi-likely to get through and they're not even the most likely to get through and then their ev is technically the strongest because no one's going to play them and part of the reason why no one's going to play them is because they can use them till till, till all these fire every uh, week Almost yeah so, so i i'm kind of completely off of this game do you, do you uh, this team do you, do you agree with that or where, where yeah 100 percent. all right so you can you can start handling the, the i guess the you you i'm not even going to characterize it so you handle philly what do you think of the philly play yeah, that, that was the next team to go to after starting at Buffalo. Uh, Philadelphia is in the, the same category um, as Buffalo, especially if you look at a certain segment of the season, weeks 8, 9, and 10. Uh, again, this all depends on what your mapping looks like, who you've used across the, the previous weeks. Philadelphia is going to be a landing spot for most people in weeks 8, 9, or 10. But also, when you look at the rest of their season, it's not as strong as Buffalo's, but Philadelphia likely will be a spot where you can use them any week. And they will be, they will serve as really good outlier picks the later in the season that you go. I'll, I'll be taking, I'll, I'll be saving Philadelphia. Um, and, and this has nothing to do with anything other than the future value that you will realize later. So I'll sacrifice immediate EV this week to realize it in later weeks. Couldn't have put it better myself, except to add that there are a zillion weeks you play them. That's what you said. Yeah. Week four, week six. Week Most week. people use them in eight, nine, or ten. But, yeah, but they'll be, they'll, I'm, I'm they'll be popular. Target, in, I'm trying in, to target them for the end of the season. Uh, they'll be damn popular, I think, in week four. But we'll we'll, we'll get to that another time. Yeah. Because, um, we'll get that next week. Um, but they're, they're, they're usable so many. Listen, and, and – 
for the same reason why my, some people might be wanting to play them because they were so impressive in their last game, all the more reason that you'd want to hold them. You know what I mean? Like, because if you think, oh, my God, they're better than I thought, it's, it's all the more reason to say, you know what? Like in the future, like I, I used to think that maybe Philadelphia would be like a six point or four point favorite over Philly and 13, over Tennessee and 13. But who knows? By then, Philly could be nine or something like that. Oh, and know. Tennessee season could be over. I mean, yeah. we're, we're not even accounting for possible injuries. It's, yeah. you know, if Philadelphia is right there on the march to the end of the season, going for one, one or two seed and Tennessee's dead in the water, maybe they change quarterbacks. I mean, like, you know, that's, that spread could easily be a, a 10 point number. Um, and you'll realize a lot of EV there when, when they had been used five other spots going up until that point. So Minnesota, I'll take this one. I mean, Minnesota is is a little well. It's certainly more dependent on pool when you're talking about circa because Minnesota is a team that that's going to be usable in Christmas. So so they're going to be mm-hmm. you have you have you competing interests, right? On the one hand, yeah, you want to save them. Yeah, the other hand, they're going to be high owned um, in Christmas also. So if if then no one's going to play them this week, you could argue that you could play them now with the idea of fading them later in Christmas. But that that's that's. That's 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 a pretty pretty interesting way to play, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that. But um, they they do have they do have use like a lot of places as well. You know, even though they didn't look that great this past this past game, um, they 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 have use in five. They certainly are really really strong in thirteen, and God knows if God forbid we're still alive. I mean, like in sixteen they have value. So I do I do think that Minnesota is a better play than Philly or Buffalo. But for but for my for for my purposes, I actually don't um, I actually don't have them uh, uh, as one of my top players. I I knew we were I, I had a feeling that we were going to differ this week um, on, on this. I wish we had recorded two podcasts last week because I had no thoughts of using Minnesota at all a week ago, um, and this is where it's important to look at where you're at now and then audible, um, you know, week to week, or even sometimes day to day because of injuries sure. and, and pivot. And we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. And Minnesota was looking to be a, an extremely popular pick this week, one week ago, things changed quite a bit. The spread dropped, you know, a few, a few points, but their pick percentage, I have to believe was going to be at least 30% one week ago. If, if, if the current, if the lines from a week ago, are, would be the same right now. I, I I like Minnesota a lot this week. It's not my favorite pick, but I, I have it as my second best pick, slightly over the uh, a third team. But it's for the purposes of what I'm looking at for my mapping for the rest of the season. I have no plans at all to use them in five or thirteen anyway, um, as it is right now. It might it would be nice to possibly have them available, and I will. I'm not going all in on Minnesota. But I like Minnesota a lot because I, I plan on, as it is right now, going all in with, you know, teams in weeks five and 13 anyway. So I'll, I'll, I, I, I won't need any Minnesota at all. Um, but if things were to remain the same, they are a very nice team to have in your back pocket for the end of the season. There's a lot of – when there's less games to choose from at the end of the year, especially ones with double picks. Minnesota is a really nice team to have at the end of the year, but I, I like them a lot this week, I wanna, especially well, at the okay. discount of only 10% pick. Before we get to the next team, that, that next team, I want to, I want to handle a team that we might not get to because they're so far on the EV list that people are going to ask me. I know that I'm, I'm going to forget. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just because like, there's such an easy dismissal for me, but I do, we do have to talk about it because they're going to be the most popular team. Right. Um, or one of them. So, so Kansas city, um, they they rate to be probably the most well. It depends on the, how you they feel what's going to happen with Herb or whatever. But but Casey rates to be uh you know seventy uh, percent winning chances and if not the most popular at least really really close and and they they are I mean listen I don't like to say anything's bad I like to win but in my world like if you play a single entry in Kansas City you should have your survivorship survivor pool license revoked okay um, I'm not playing this I'm playing zero of them. And it's a combination. Of them, right? First, first of all, their EV sticks. All right. Not to mention that they have like infinite, you know, uh, future value. You know, and we can we can go over all the different ways you could do that. But but the fact of the matter is, is that you're you're just not like you're just not supposed to do that. Um, 
do, do, any disagreement from you on this? Yeah, I, I put this in my my fade save category along with the Chargers. Uh, I'm actually baffled that Kansas City has this predicted pick percentage. I I, it, I mean it it. it it's mind blowing to me. I mean, they're essentially very similar in win percentage to several other teams that have a third or less of the pick percentage that they're going to have this week. Um, very easy uh, fade slash save. Um, I mean, two thirds of the people, I guess, are going to be picking one of these two teams. I well, let's let's see what happens with the injuries. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens at Herbert for. Uh, and let's see what happens. Well, I meant I meant for this week between these two teams. This is over sixty. Uh, I mean, but what I mean is that if the Chargers, if Herbert oh. is, is, is if Herbert yeah. is even a game time decision when picks lock, you know, uh, I don't think anybody's going to play them. Um, no, but, I, I agree, and I and I'm hoping, you know, assuming he plays, this is one of those games where even if they were ten percent picked, they wouldn't be a top ten. Uh, they might be a third or fourth favorite play for me this week. Are we talking now about KC or the Chargers? For, for, the, char- for the Chargers. Okay. Well, Kansas, well, Kansas City, I would never play under well, any circumstance. We'll, we'll get back zero to the people Chargers. We'll get back to the Chargers. What I want to do okay. is, and again, we haven't talked about a single thing this week, right? But but the, the way the way Survivor works, I think I'm confident in saying this. Like I, like 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 yeah. good players play 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 well. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna give you a break, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have everybody listen, and I'm gonna I hope I'm right about this. I want you to explain to everybody why Cleveland is a great player this week. Yeah, Cleveland is definitely the best pick this week. Um, absolute slam dunk. Very similar to for the reasons that San Francisco was last week. The difference being that I have a very t- hard time seeing Cleveland be higher picked in some of my pools like San Francisco was last week. Uh, San Francisco's projections were low. Some of them end up being in the moderate range, 15 20%. But this is Cleveland's... I believe best play the rest of the year outside of week 13. And that is, and we're assuming that Deshaun Watson is playing in that game. You're not, I'm not going to take them in 13 anyway, if everything plays out correctly. Um, if I'm not going, and like I said, in, I think two previous weeks already, if you're, if I'm not going to take them, I need to find a place. Well, explain, them. explain more about that because this is an important point. Why are you not taking them in 13? So I, I'm going to scroll. I, I need, I need to visualize this. I already, I already have my week 13 picked. I, I'm taking the Rams if, if things hold as they are. Um, it's really easy if there are a few other choices, but as it is right now, if I have 20 entries left, I'm going all in with the Rams and all of them. So if I'm doing that, then I don't need anybody else. Even if I were to be taking multiple teams, though, Cleveland's not going to be one of those teams. Even if they were the highest, eh, you know, if they were – what seven point favorites as, as they are right now, I would prefer to take a four or five point favorite where a lot less people will be on that team. Well, that, that's, um, that, that's the point I wanted him to, 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 to hammer home. And he did a good job of that last week. I was, I wanted to make sure he took, took care of that is that let's say that only 8% of people pay Cleveland this week. And I, it's, it's not going to be 1%. I think people are going to play. I do. Uh, I think some of the better people are going to play, whatever. So let's just say 5% people play him this week. What that means is this, is that you look down the road here and I don't really see a week where they're going to get more than 1% ownership, if that, from now until week 13, which means that they're going to be available to about 90% plus of the of the people who are alive in week 13. We, and, and if you talk about week 13, you'll see the Rams in Minnesota. As we've discussed, Minnesota is a good play this week. Minnesota is a good play in week five. Minnesota could be a good play on Christmas. There, there, there are times that Minnesota is going to get diluted. The Rams are going to be a good play in five. They're going to be a good, good play in six. Be a good play. So they're going to be diluted. The fact is, is that Cleveland is going to be available to 90% of the, of, the, of the United States population. And if they're even remotely close to a seven-point favorite, they're going to probably be – Let's just say, the, from an analytical perspective, let's just call it a shitload owned. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Which, 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 what he's getting at is, is even if like it's obvious that it's Cleveland's only chance to play him, you would not even wouldn't even play him anyway because they're going to be so popular. So if that's the case, and now you have them in a in, in a shot where it's definitely going to be their last chance that you're going to play him, um, that's that's what you know. And then this is that's 
it really like you and I take that kind of that level of analysis for granted, but it's it's really a level of analysis not that many people really uh, undertake. Um, so um, I want to make I want to jump in and make two points. Yeah. Don't let me forget my second point, which, Go which for is going to be about Las Vegas. Go. The first one that note that I've written down here. This this more so applies to pools with double picks at any point. When you assuming that your pool is going to go the distance, if it requires double picks, you need to take more teams. And the more teams that you take, the less great teams you're going to have available the later in the season you get. You don't have to take Cleveland to get through this thing. If you, if you got to take 20, 21, 22, 23 winners, but it's a team that you certainly you should be eyeing as I need to find a place for this team. If you're not going to take Cleveland in week four being next week, and there's, Plenty of reason to take them next week, but you're not going to take them in four. You really should strongly consider taking them in three um, because 13, as it is right now, they're going to be a fade, which brings up my second point. We talked about Las Vegas as, and I mean, th- this is how important it is to look at it on a, a week by week basis. We, I mentioned, I think it was just last week that there's, you know, I don't envision any way that I'll be taking Las Vegas in week seven, I've already changed my mind. Um, and, and, and really it's because of this, there's a new landscape. Um, the Chargers won't be nearly as picked by week seven as they would have been a week ago. Um, if, if the spread this week was higher, um, if there you know, weren't, if, if Herbert was 100%. Um, Cincinnati, every single person left has Cincinnati available because they've lost the first two weeks. Um, they won't be, well, they're going to be picked this week for sure. That's the other team we'll get onto after this, but there's a lot of different plays. Denver, um, they're going to be very available in seven. They're not going to be picked the next four weeks. Um, Tampa Bay will have only been picked in week five. So there's week seven has really opened up quite a bit to where now I really like Las Vegas as a pick where one week ago, I couldn't envision at that time, a way for me to take them. But that is, 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 it, it illustrates the point that it, on a week-to-week basis, it does change. Don't get set in your ways and be willing to change uh, your opinion on certain games as the variables well, adjust. And, and, and to, to piggyback off of that point, um, it's one of the reasons why, you know, that, that future value is kind of important. But, like, and the further out the future value is, the more variance that has, you know, um, it, it, it only, if you're, if you're saving a team for next week, the chance that happens to be something, something happens to you now and this week to change your mind is not that much. But if you're saving a team for 11 weeks from now, you better believe that something's going to change. <laughs> you know, I yeah. don't know if it's going to, whatever. Um, I was talking to my partner about this. If you're deciding, let's just say hypothetically, you're deciding between Cleveland and Minnesota, you can make arguments for both. What, even if you're not even looking at, at the, at the next few weeks. The tiebreaker for me would be who has the, 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 the stronger closeout. Minnesota has a better closing schedule than, than Cleveland does. Um, there's a better chance, as it is right now, that you would, you, would, you, would, you would take Minnesota and win the last four or five weeks than you would Cleveland. Um, for me, that would be the tiebreaker to you know, take Cleveland now and save Minnesota for later. And it's not that like you're saving them for a particular week. You're saving them for potentially, I think, four weeks out of a, a five or six week stretch. And that's a nice thing to have because you're not targeting one week where it might not even matter. But if you have a team that you could be used in a variety of different spots, like Philadelphia that we spoke about earlier, it doesn't matter. You don't have to decide, I'm going to take Philadelphia here. They're, them and Buffalo could be played in almost every week, the back half of the season. Um, the longer that you save them, barring catastrophic injury to the quarterbacks, you're going to be able to place them in a week down the line that has a lot of immediate val- uh, EV, EV value. The next, the next group that I have here, uh, I have it as tied between Cincinnati, LAC, and Rams. Why don't Why don't you uh, Why don't you talk about Cincinnati, Will? Because I do think that they are they, they are in play. You know, um, they are in play depending on your pools and depending whatever. And I, I guess I'll talk about this one first. Yeah, go ahead. Their 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 EV is a little bit lower than the teams that we talked about, and. And and your assess and and your assessment of their future value it, it can 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 be somewhat what fluid. So so first of all, um, they certainly stand out as as kind of a smashy play in week seven, 
And, and they also can stand out as kind of a smashy play in, in week nine. Okay. So, so, so they, they, they do have a, a decent amount of, of, of future value. Um, so, I mean, every time I think, but, about it, but it, but it ends there. No, no, no nine, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, um, that's an important uh, point to illustrate after nine, if you haven't used them by then, you're going to need to get lucky for them to become a great pick or, you're going to just pick them because that's who you're able to pick. Yeah. So I, I just don't know if, if, if they can move up to like the level, in my opinion, at least of Cleveland as a play, but, yeah. I, but, but I, I think I prefer them to Philly. Um, I mean, we're a little different on this. I, I don't know if I prefer them to Minnesota. Uh, I, I think I might agree with you. I think I might be a little bit more on Minnesota, but I certainly prefer them to like like Kansas City, for example. We're gonna oh, talk. Yeah. About, we're gonna chop by the charge in a second, but um, but but go, walk through walk me and walk to, uh, uh, everybody through again this th that idea you were coming up with seven and nine with respect to okay. Vegas and Cincinnati and stuff. So so you were saying that Cincinnati, if you play them before already, you lost. OK, so everybody that, that's still alive has them available. OK, obviously. Right? So if, if people are going to not people are going to use them somewhat this week, right, maybe like 10 percent or something. So then if 90 percent of the people have them available in seven. I think you're right about this charger thing. I, th I think the Chargers are not going to be as highly owned in seven as you originally had thought or Vegas, for that matter, because I think Cincinnati like you said, Cincinnati is going to be emptied out in seven and nine. Between those two weeks, they're going to get emptied out. Um, so I guess for that reason, may, maybe maybe Cincinnati's better than I thought. You know, may, maybe Cincinnati is going to be pretty popular in seven and nine, and may, maybe Cincinnati is better than I thought this week. Yeah, you 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 pointed out the reasons why. I I I. I this is one where I had to walk through it with my partner to really see it. Um, Cause I didn't see it, you know, all on my own. We had to talk it through. Yeah. Um, I, I like Cincinnati better than some of these other teams, but after talking it through with someone else, this is why it's nice to have a friend, either a right. partner that you do the pools with, or just a friend that you, you know, you know, t you know, talk through, you know, like poker hands with it. it, it it's helpful um, to get different perspectives assuming everybody is going to take Cincinnati, now, that's, that's a stretch, but assuming everyone in the pool is going to take Cincinnati, that would be an average of 33% per week. Um, and, you know, right now it's at 10. I mean, like you, you're getting a lot less than what the average would be if, you know, that's not really the best way to look at it. But if only 10% are taken in this week, that allows, that, that opens up 90% for those other two weeks. Now they won't be 45 and 45 or, or 60, 30, and not everybody will use them, but a very high percentage of people will. Um, and getting in on a 10%, getting, getting in on them 10% is a lot better than getting in on them at 20 or, or, or 30%. The difference being that they are going to be much more highly favored in those other yeah. weeks. I mean, what are they this week? Like four and a, yeah, four and a half, <laughs> five points. So you are, you are, you know, giving up some win percentage to – realize that pick you know smaller pick percentage but th they're a very good portfolio pick a portfolio pick being if you know if i have i, I don't even know how many entries i have left. i have like 20 like 25 entries left across all my pools mm -hmm. i'm not taking one team this week um i'm not going to take two I, I'm, I'm going to take three teams i'm waiting at highest toward cleveland uh then minnesota and i need to have a third team to bring them in this like last week yeah I was heaviest on San Francisco yeah. and, then, and then Las Vegas. I wanted to add a third team. And even though I pushed for Green Bay last week, I decided to go with Denver, um, which I, in hindsight, I really like now because Denver, you know, I got lucky. I mean, they, have, they had a couple injuries and now they're not, you know, as usable in some of these later weeks as they were a week ago. So that, that, that was more lucky than anything that I, I chose Denver over Green Bay, but, if you're going to add another team, you need to look at reasons why. I don't need all of my Cincinnati available in week seven and nine. There's there's other choices. So I should use some of them now because I won't need all of it for those weeks. And I'm certainly not going to need it for later in the season. 
So here's the deal with the Chargers, and we're, we're going to talk about this. First of all, um, listen, we don't let talk about individual pulls or whatever, but but I think it's uh, it, it, I think it's worth noting that uh, listen, without giving specific advice on specific pools, that that in circa the Chargers are not going to be almost nearly twenty nine percent because of their ability on their, their availability on Christmas. Okay, mm -hmm. um, among other things, um, and and that this this requires you know you to make some, some adjustments. Um, so if, if, if I'm not going to come out and, and say, if someone asked me for a circuit opinion, which I probably wouldn't give somebody, you know, what I mean? <laughs> something in the pool, right. But, but, but I, I, I would not consider the charges a particularly poor play um, as well, certainly not as poor um, as there would be in normal pools. Cause I just, I really don't even have a handle yet on how circuit adjusts to this stuff, because every time I think that, that teams are going to get completely unowned and saved, like they get used. And every time I sometimes think that this is the time they're going to get used and not saved, then they get saved. So I still don't even have a handle. Like last year, this is like kind of weird. Like last year when, when Dallas, we were going to get to Thanksgiving. I know you were kind of out early, so you kind of stopped paying attention, really. Um, but but Dallas, I, I talked myself into believing like two weeks before that people were going to get smart and fade Dallas. OK, I, I talked myself into that. I'm like, you know what? Everybody's going to see they're really popular. They're going to play this, that, and the other thing. So I actually um, saved a little Dallas for that week and played one Dallas on Thanksgiving, just presuming that I was that, that I had this like wait, this weird idea that people were going to get smart, whatever. And they ended up 80 percent off. OK, yeah, how dumb am I for overestimating, you know, like what, what these people are going to do. Right. So I, I really don't have a good handle on the circuit pool, you know, and the level of sharpness that exists there. Um, so I don't know what to do with 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 that. But in straight single pick pools, um, um, I don't think I I want to I want to play the Chargers. You know, I, I, I as you mentioned, I I could I could use them. I mean, certainly in seven, like you mentioned. If you don't want to do that, I mean, like you could you could push them back to freaking fifteen, even if you want yeah. to be aggressive. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They're, yeah, they're, 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 yeah. There, 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 there are things to do. But, but, but one thing that it shouldn't it should go. I mean, it shouldn't go unsaid that it's a four o'clock game, and in a situation right now where Herbert is is questionable, you know. Um, and so, if you were thinking of playing the Chargers, you're really you're really asking for trouble. You know what I mean? Like kind of, kind of doing that. So, so, um, and not to mention that it's possible that again, if you're thinking of playing the chargers, I mean, do you even want him playing if he's injured? You know, you almost rather like not play the game than worry about him getting another hit and getting taken out or something like that. So I think for all those reasons, I, I think that, that, that the chargers certainly in double pick pools are just, are, are not good at all. I think the straight single pick pools, I think are probably, I want to, I don't want to say fully fish, but I think poor. And I do think circuit they're just they're a little bit better than the others, than those than those other pools. How about that? I like them better in circuit than the other because we've already saw this uh, in week two where the Rams were underpicked in circuit yeah. compared to other pools. And you know, people are very much considering you know the Christmas slate when they're making their picks. So if, if your pool has a wrinkle. Um, even be, like our pool has multiple wrinkles. So right. you can, whenever a team, a highly favored team that's playing on one of these standalone slates plays, look at what their pick projection is or what their, what their pick percentage is compared to other pools. And then use that for other teams playing on those standalone slates. Right. Okay. So um, we, I think we could dispense with the Rams rather quickly. I mean, we, we, if, if you have been listening to this podcast, you've already been been informed, and I'm going to be doing the same thing. Uh, that 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 we will be we will be hopefully having being alive. We will hopefully be alive in week 13, where we could drop the Rams on everybody's ass. You know what I mean? Like that, that would be that would be very very fortunate. Uh, if we get to week 13, the chance of us getting to week 13 is next to zero, right? But hey, there's always there's always that <laughs> next to zero. But if we you are have, alive yeah. in 13, it's going to be with a big old Rams helmet in our freaking. Mm -hmm. in, our, in our hands ready to ready to drop on to, onto the universe so uh, let me jump in really quick eric yeah. I, I i know you, you say this is a funny comment because we are probably not going to get there but you have to plan that you are going to get there that's so that you're prepared when right. you arrive 
Right. I right. would Good much point. rather, I'd much rather just get, no, I mean, I'm watching week two and I was so pissed. I right. mean, the, 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 like, you know, I, I was, I, I'm watching these games. Like why didn't New Orleans just lose in week one? And I didn't have to just be put through this in week two. I mean, week two, so it was easy. we finally, finally got an easy game with San Francisco. Yeah. Finally. But no, with, with Las Vegas, with Las <laughs> oh, Vegas wow. though, like, you know, it's like, I could have just been out and then just laughed at the Raiders. Instead, right. you know, I did, you know, it, it was literally the same thing. Two 16 point favorites. One, one went for me and then one went against me the next week. Right. But none of, none of that matters. You have to right. set yourself up for those latter weeks. Yeah. Uh, you'd much rather be in a stronger position. It's like in poker. Um, there's this one player, a local player that, that comes to mind. He always wanted to wait to get all in with a good hand. Yeah. And I asked him and I asked him once, would you rather get all in as a 2080 for a hundred big blind pot, or would you rather get all in as an 80 20 for a uh, 16 big blind pot? And he said, I know what the right answer is, but I'd still rather get all in with the better hand. And that was the end of the conversation. Well, you, you, you want to put yourself in a favorable spot in the latter stages of these pools where you can realize the absolute most equity well, gonna, by sacrificing gonna, some now for more later. I'm going to go with two more analogies. Again, we have time. I'll go with two more analogies. One, one um, I'll go back to the poker one in a minute, but as, as you guys all know, I mean, I do a lot of DFS and, and the key, the key, not the key, but one important point about playing DFS with these big, big pools is that you, you need to be, you, you need to go for that top money the way the results distribute. And it's kind of similar in Survivor. I mean, you need to go for that top result, especially the old Survivor technically pays one person. You know what I mean? So so it's very similar. And, and, and if you play a, a method that, that makes you kind of like sort of in contention, but never really in contention to win, in DFS, it's 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 a horror show. You have to be willing to just lose, 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 so that one day maybe you win, right? As opposed to like cash, 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 whatever. So that's one thing. And another one, since you use poker, as you guys probably all know, I mean, I, I used to back like zillions of people in poker, okay? And there were all kinds of different types of players I played. And I saw charts and I saw results. I mean, I know more about the way results distributes in MTTs probably than anybody on the face of this earth. And, and and what I like to say is there was a there was an old, old poem by Robert Frost called like fire and ice. Basically, some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. So in any case, I use that analogy in poker. There are two distinct ways to lose all of your money in poker. OK, and, and one of them, which is the easiest way, which everybody knows about, is you play way too loose and way too aggressive. You have no idea what you're doing. You're throwing chips around whatever it is, you go all in with bad hands when you have no shot of enemy folding and all this stuff and you lose all your money that way. And that's obvious. But the unobvious way that you can lose all your money, and I've seen this too, is playing just too tight, okay? And waiting for that opportunity to go in and waiting for the good hand and not doing what, you know, not bluffing ever and doing all that stuff. And you will lose all your money that way too. It just won't be as as violent, but it's just as much of a torture. And, and I've seen it. I've seen people just, lose a little bit, lose a little bit, maybe have a little cash and a little bit, less, but eventually they go broke. Okay. And that's like kind of like losing by ice. Right. And, and, and survivor is very similar. I would rather, like you said, if I set myself up for that 1% chance or half a percent chance that I get to the end and win the thing, as opposed to just having fun and surviving until week seven, where I run out of teams. Okay. Um, no, and, and let, let's expand that a little bit because a lot of people are thinking, well, if I make it to the end, I win. Yeah, that's true. You win, but you're going to win along with a small or medium or large group of other people. That's true. If, that's if true. you take if, if you take the same the same chalky path as all the rest of the players, you yeah. will win a smaller piece of the prize pool. Um, you you without creating. You know, you, you, we're, we're what Eric and I are, are aspire to is to have a lot more variance in our results for the chance at a greater prize, at the end, which also in the long run, long run being eternity is, is a, is a greater amount of money average finish yep. per time playing. All right. So let's, let's go on. So these are, these are, these are these, these last group, group of plays. These are like my favorite. These are like my uh, showdown slate plays. That people always want, like they want to know who I'm, yeah. who, who's out there that, 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 that is, is for, for the brave or more to the point. Okay. For, for pools where you need to play that way, like double, triple pick pools or whatever it is. And for those of you that have been following along, 
okay? Um, uh, again, you guys, I told you guys how to get the answer to this last week. But if you can't, if you don't remember, you can go back and watch this. Those of you that watched this last week, you should be able to get these. Um, I put it to you this way. What, what plays do you think Mike and I are going to give you that are kind of like out there plays that we might play anyway in double, triple pick pools that you could be aggressive with? I'll let you stop the video. Okay. Now we're back. Um, why don't you give me a, well, what, what do you got? What do you got for me? Yeah, and again, uh, for the viewers, this is, these are, don't, don't try this at home. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. These aren't, these aren't picks that we have double picks this week. These are ones where there's double picks later. So yeah. you want to save the stronger teams, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Kansas City Chargers, save those for the back end of the season by taking these teams now that free up those teams later. My favorite one, my, well, uh, there's three. I like Chicago, Seattle, and New York Giants are my, are my only three other plays. I, I mean, I guess Atlanta, if the, if the, if the spread with Seattle flips. Um, I think I like Chicago the most just because they're higher favored than the other two. So, so the point is, the way you guys got to do this, again, is you take a look at, yeah, you take a look down the left column and see who's like kind of near here. But the real key is to scroll your, your eyes all the way to the right and see if you can find little empty boxes over here, okay? Because empty boxes over here means that they, you ain't gonna play them in the future, right? So if you look, if you don't even look at anything else, right? I'm, I have my hand over the left side. I look at the zero and I scroll to the left and there's Chicago. I look over here and I see zero. And I scroll to the left and that's Seattle. And then I scroll down here, this is a little half uh, half star here. And I go to the left and that's the Giants, right? So, so, these, so th these are the types of plays that their EV is much worse than any of the teams that we mentioned. However, if, if you get away with it, right, you are going, theoretically, going to be compensated for that in the future because these other teams that we talked about are, are all better plays. They're all going to be, have some use, especially in double picks later on in the season. Um, and and it's, it's so, so Chicago, yep. Uh, Giants, yep. Seattle, yep. And you even touched on Atlanta, which would be another one. And just, just for fun, okay, if you're going to go and do that, you can even take a shot with Houston, okay, as, as, a, as, as a small underdog in the, uh, in, in the Chicago game, okay. Um, again, I, I, would, I would hope that you have many entries if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're going to allocate one even down that low. But I promise you this, you ain't playing them again. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, and, and, and it, it, to the I would I I personally wouldn't go as low as Houston. I mean, right. I would take Atlanta over yeah. Seattle, or I mean, I prefer the favorite. But if they if they come pick them, you know, I might. Yeah. What What's the difference? Yeah. Um, right. I wanted to point out a small difference why you shouldn't take New Orleans. Um, oh, let's go for it. I, yeah, I didn't even I didn't if, you, if you look at New Orleans, this is a team that we mentioned as a reason you should take them in week one, because you were going to fade them in week uh, five, 15, 15, 15. Yeah. So the, re no, I don't like new Orleans at all this week. If you're trying to go on, you know, one of those outlier picks, but it's not because I want to keep them for this particular week. Cause you know, most likely a lot of people have them there anyway. Right. I'm looking at past that, you know, new Orleans is, is a better team to have just in case for week 16 or 18 yep. um you know it because as it is right now new orleans is a much better chance to make the playoffs than chicago or seattle or atlanta um and because of that i'd rather keep new orleans even though they're more favorited than all those other teams that's a team that and you get to the end, if you don't use them against Atlanta, if that's a double pick week, that's fantastic. You can fade them there, hope they lose. And and, and then when you get to like week 18, not many people, if, if there are double picks in the Atlanta week, week 15, then there might not be many people that have them in week 18. And maybe you get lucky and they're playing Carolina and they win there in the playoffs. And so Carolina's out. So already. I will tell you the two, the two, the two caveats, uh, that kind of two philosophical issues or questions I have for myself. When we deal with these big, huge double pick, triple pick weeks, uh, cup, tr double pick, triple pick pools, whatever it is, is this. So uh, we decided this year, 
that that for most for most of the entries in these pools, we we are just going to just 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 backload the country and and just is really just. Listen, we're going to be in, in other pools and whatever it is. We, I just resigned myself that we're just going to gamble it up with these with these dark throws early. And at some point, we're, you're going to have to, you know, when, at some point, you're going to have to turn the screws, right? Because you can't gamble the whole season. If you're holding all these teams, you'd like to drop them at some point, right? So the question in your head is like, when do you when do you, when when do you when do you flip the switch? You know, like when do you when do you start dropping chalk? Because you know no one else has it, sort of. You know what I mean? So so it's something I'm going to deal with. And, and the one pool that we, I keep referring to is one that's just extra cool. They have doubles in five. And then you get a break for two weeks. And then it's doubles the rest of the three weeks. Then it's doubles the rest of the season. The other the other thing that that to keep in mind with these pools with a lot of people that you don't think is going to – you think is going to end up chopping, when you have these double pick pools like this, the other thing you have to think about is how far in advance do you really have to think? Because like this one pool, I don't think I've ever seen it go to 18. Okay, like ever. So, so, oh, yeah, no uh, way. So, a question is I mean, do I even have to really worry? Do I really need to save a team in six because I think I'm going to play in 18? You know, or at some point you're like, you know what? If I get to 18, I'll worry about it then. You know, like, if, if I get to 18 and it's actually alive, then I'll hope that some team needs to rest their starters and I'll get to play like the Jets as a favorite over the over over somebody in the last well, week of the season. Let, let, let me jump back in because I, I, I don't want, I don't want people to think that I'm saying, I don't like New Orleans because you should save them for week 18. I don't mean that at all as a, as a pure tiebreaker, because there's not much difference in terms of win percentage between Chicago and New Orleans. Right. Um, and, and when it's really close, I'd rather pick the team that has a lot less value toward the end of the season. New Orleans just has more. I'm not saving New Orleans. I'm just picking Chicago over them. I'm picking the giants over them. And I am, do, I, I am picking I think I'm picking Chicago and I'm picking Chicago for sure. Um, in, in, uh, one of my pools with double as five double pick weeks. And, and I think I'm picking Seattle as my other one. And I, I and I, I don't think I'm going to take the giants. I just want to take, I think they're a fine pick, but I'd rather put more of my eggs in one basket and hope to advance more entries than scatter them out too much. So well, it's not saving new Orleans. It, it, it just serves as a tiebreaker. It's a, it's a better team to have later. I'll give you guys one more little bit. And again, for those of you who've made it this far, I mean, you know, congratulations. But another, uh, I'll, I'll just make this case for the Giants. The good thing about the Giants, especially, it depends when you go into doubles. It depends what you're ever. Like, if you look at them in week 10, they're they're like a seven-point favorite against Houston. And, and if, you're, if, if you are on doubles that week, it's very possible that they could be a big bit of chalk. <laughs> you want to kind of get, oh, yeah. oh, you don't, oh, you don't want to have any part of it. So, so um, you know, and, and that, that's not to say that you can, that, that you don't want to, that, that you have to play the Giants. In other words, you, you're, this is America and you're allowed to never play the Giants, right? Like you're allowed to fade the Giants this week and obviously in 10, but when you're playing a pool that you have to use like 26 teams or, or whatever, however many that adds up to whatever, the Giants almost like feel elite you know, at, at, at some point. So, um, listen, the chances that we're at week ten is 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 minimal. Um, but if if so, uh, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna it's gonna be it'll it'll be fine. Um, and one one last yeah. little yep. story about when you when you should pivot. Yep, you'll know when you see it. You, <laughs> you can't. You just you really can't know right now. You look. Like we didn't, I didn't like Las Vegas um, last week for week, whatever it is, seven. But now I like them because the, the landscape has changed. I backload these teams to the end of the season, just hoping that because the, the most likely scenario is to want to have those teams in the back end of the season. And I'll tell you, it, it is a great feeling when you get there and you have those teams. Uh, three years, three seasons ago, it was the best I'd ever done with Survivor. And, of course, I won zero pools. I, I, I lost back to back to back to back to back different games to get knocked out of pools. So it, was, it was stunning. Just, just to, it, yeah. in, in one pool, though, I, even though I lost it, I set up the, the perfect path. I, I, was, I, I had a unique team in 16 and week 17 that literally no one else had. And I went down in flames with the Browns, but I created – I was the only person in that pool that could have scooped. And, and it happened to be that 
I had the biggest favorite in week 17 and the second biggest favorite in week 16 anyway. So it worked out and that I gave myself the most EV. It just didn't work out because the, you know, the Browns lost and I was out, but it's about Skolansky dollars. And we can talk about that another time than actual dollars. Well, I'll, 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 I'll piggyback off of this with one last little quote. Um, for those of you that don't know, like a like hundred careers ago, I used to teach the bar exam for a living. I used to travel all over the country lecturing on the multi-state bar exam, which was uh, the multiple choice part of the bar where you had to learn constitutional law, torts, uh, crim law, uh, common law contracts, um, and property. And, and in constitutional law, there was a very famous case called the Miller case, which had to deal with obscenity. And one of the famous uh, concurring opinions by Justice Potter Stewart, where they where they asked him, well, you know, how do you make this test for obscenity? He's like, I don't know, but I'll, I know it when I see it. OK. And so likewise, when it comes to pivoting, I, I think that after a while, you will know it when you see it. Um, all right. I guess that will do it. Good luck to everybody. And uh, like I said, hope we're back next week. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But one thing that's interesting is that is that Cleveland is Thursday. So we got we, we could we could uh, could be it could be it could get ugly pretty quickly. But uh, we will see what happens. Uh, good luck, everybody. See you next week. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.